Now there are actually a few different types of autofocus systems that exist uh, and in today's video we're going to talk about the most common type which is the one used on digital cameras, smartphones, camcorders, uh, basically the sorts of cameras that most people use and it's called contrast detection. So the interesting thing about this type of autofocus system is that the way it works is surprisingly similar to how a human would manually focus a camera. So what you're doing when you're focusing a camera is you have some sort of wheel that you can turn or a, you know, some button that you can press. Uh, somehow you can operate the arrangement of the lenses inside your camera, right? And then basically what you're doing is you're looking at the viewfinder, you're looking at how sharp the image is, and then you make adjustments and you try to get that sharpness to be better. So essentially the whole process can be summed up in a, in a diagram that looks like this. So you start by observing the sharpness of the image, then you make an adjustment, and then you repeat. And you keep looking at how sharp it is and making adjustments until you get it right. And the, the autofocus system that we discuss in today's video works in the same way. So it doesn't just get it right in one go. That's not what this type of autofocus does. There are systems that do this, but the system that we're looking at today is a trial and error system, just like a human focusing a camera. But then there is one interesting question that comes to mind, which is how does the computer or the processor look at the image and determine its sharpness? I mean, for a human, that's an easy step. You look at the image and you, sh you see if it's sharp or not. For a computer, it's a bit more complicated. Now, this is where the word contrast comes in, in contrast detection because it turns out that the sharpness of an image is proportional to the contrast of the image. So a sharper image has more contrast than a blurry image. So the camera is detecting the contrast in the image and therefore it knows how sharp the image is. But then of course that raises the question, how do you detect contrast in an image? Now we're going to take a look at quite a simple method, which is probably not the way your camera does it or your smartphone does it, um, but it's quite easy to understand and it kind of gets you an idea of the sort of thing that's going on. So let's say that we have an image, okay? And this image is 12 by 12 pixels in size and it has no colors, so it's a grayscale image. And this is what it looks like. So it's, it's a picture of some black circle on a white background. Now each pixel has a certain value and that value represents its brightness and in this case that value is going to go from 0 to 100%. So 0% means complete darkness, the pixel is black, 100% means, well, 100% brightness, the pixel is white. So now how are we going to detect the contrast in this image? Well before we begin notice that the contrast in this image is probably going to be quite good because we have a completely dark object on a completely white background so the contrast here is excellent. So what we're going to do for this system is first of all we're going to take every value of every single pixel and we're going to add all of them up to each other. Finally we get a certain number and we divide that number by the total number of pixels. That's right, we're taking an average. And that gives us an average value of 64%. So that's the average brightness of a pixel in our image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the difference between each pixel and the average. In other words, we're going to take a look at the deviation of each pixel. So for example, the first pixel has a brightness of 100%. Now the average is 64%. So the difference for this pixel is 36%. And we do that for every single pixel, once again, and we add up all of those differences. And finally, again, we divide by the total number of pixels, and that gives us the average deviation. And that turns out to be, in this case, 47%. This is an indication of the amount of contrast in the image. And for now, that's quite a meaningless number because we haven't seen what these numbers are like for any other images. So let's take a look at another one. This version of the image is almost the same, but in this case, 
the edges are blurry, so this might have been taken with a camera that was out of focus. Now if we do the same thing again, this time we get an average of 65%, so a little bit different, that's probably because I didn't draw it quite perfectly, yes that's right, I made these images manually in MS Paint, and if we then look at the average deviation, this time we get a score of 32%, quite a bit lower, which means the contrast in the second image is lower than the contrast in the first image, which is right because the second image was more blurry than the first image. So this is a possible way that a contrast detection system could work, but again you can do it many other possible ways, some of them are even simpler than this method, other ones are much more complicated. It might not always focus on what you want it to focus on. Let's say that you have some, you know, you're trying to film some person in front of a background and you want the person to be in focus. However, the person is small compared to the background due to the way that you've framed the shot. Now the problem is the camera, if it uses the contrast detection system, is going to focus on the background. The reason for that is the background is much bigger than the person. So having the background sharp and in focus gives the overall image a better contrast than having the person in focus, because the person is only such a small part of the image. So through this trial and error process, the camera is going to find that focusing on the background gives better contrast for the overall image, and therefore it's going to focus on that background, which of course you don't want because you were trying to film that person. So this problem can be solved by performing the contrast detection on specific regions. I've opened the camera, as you can see, and I can tap on parts of the screen and then what it does is it performs contrast detection on the part that has the circle around it, in this case sometimes it's a box, sometimes it's a circle. Um, I think it's, it's a box though because internally processing is much easier to do on a box than on some weird circular shape, but the graphics are a circle, anyway you get the point. Some other cameras might use fixed regions, so uh, the boxes, the, the specific spots that it can apply focus to are already placed in the frame and the user can only pick which one uh, they want to focus on. And of course, what's also very popular in modern cameras is that it combines it with face detection. So it detects a face, finds where the face is, cuts a box around the face, and then it does contrast detection on that face specifically so that the face is always in focus, which is also quite nice. Anyway, now you know a bit more, hopefully, about how autofocus works on digital cameras. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and of course, thank you for watching.